Hey, what's going on? Shane at Shane Hubbard Fit. Today, I wanna to teach you how to track calories in the Lose It app. Now, if you don't know what the Lose It app is and you use a different app to track your calories, that is completely fine. A lot of these apps are very, very similar. There's obviously some differences in functionality and features, but for the most part, they all have uh, a couple of things that are very similar. So if you're new to tracking calories at all, or maybe you wanna try a different app, I will be using the Lose It app to help do a couple of walkthroughs. Now, some of this video is going to be me on my phone. You're gonna see my actual phone and we're gonna go over some very specific settings that I want you to make sure that you have set up. So that will obviously be different if you're using a different app. But for the most part, as long as you can find it within your given app, and you can turn some of these features on or off or toggle them however you need to, you'll be able to have the exact same result. Anyway, wanted to get started there. Let's go ahead and go over to the app and I'll show you exactly how to set everything up and track your food. All right, so once you have downloaded the Lose It app and set up an account and all that good stuff, you're gonna see a screen that looks similar to this. This is sort of the home screen or the log screen. Um, you can go to the far right under my day if you want to and you can see you know some of these other features if you're not seeing these calorie amounts we'll go over that in a second um, but you know this is essentially the first page you'll look at and then you'll go to my log and you'll see that I already logged a couple of things for my day and you know you got things like goals and social and all this other stuff we'll go over that later but let's first nail some very important things to get started with so in the upper right hand corner whether you have a photo or not you're gonna see sort of like a little profile icon you're gonna to want to click that and what you're gonna to wanna to do uh, first and foremost is go to edit profile. And you're gonna to wanna to set up your calorie or your weight loss plan. So you'll have your name, you know, you have your, your weight, your inches, your birthday, all that good stuff. And I'm gonna click weight loss plan. And as you can see, I've got some of my info up here. Male, 30 years old, 5'6", weighs 169. Activity, activity level, somewhat active, and stuff like that. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy. Underneath that, you'll see my calorie budget. What you wanna do is you wanna click fixed or you wanna click whatever it says and then you want to choose the option of fixed. Now I'm gonna explain really quickly, quickly why that's important. You could use dynamic and using dynamic will, as it says right here, that as you lose weight, your calories will decrease to match that. All right, so you know, not a terrible strategy, but here's why I don't think that's the best place to start. You wanna be able to eat as many calories as you can and still lose weight. So if you set up a fixed profile, what you'll be doing is you'll be filling in a certain amount of calories that you wanna consume each day, and you are going to track your weight. Now, as you track your weight, if you start to notice that after you know four weeks or so that your weight is stalled or it's pretty much, you know, you're at a, um, not a negative, but a neutral weight uh, plus or minus, then you might want to drop calories, but I would rather you be in more control of when you drop calories than this app because I don't necessarily trust that it's going to have the best strategy and formula and algorithm and all that stuff. So what I rather you do is hit fixed. And then when you hit fixed, it's going to say, okay, well, how many calories a day do you want to consume? If you haven't already, make sure you download my three-step a fat loss calculator. It used to be four step, but I actually was able to condense it to three steps to make it even easier. Make sure you download that. Whatever calorie amount that you get, you are going to put in uh, the my calorie budget where it says change. Click that and you can change it to whatever you want, whatever your number is. Okay, so make sure you go and download that and then you get your number and you put it in here, hit save, and that's going to be your calorie budget. That's going to be your calorie deficit. That's what you're going to want to. Um, you know, aim for on a week, on a daily and a weekly basis. So then after you're done doing that, uh, you want to hit save. So it saves it for you. And then there's another thing that I want to show you really quick. So if you keep scrolling down and go all the way to settings, there's going to be something that says hap, uh, Apple health integration. It might, you know, whatever the Android equivalent of that is, you'll want to click on that. And you want to make sure that under automatically log exercise, you put disable auto logged exercise. Here's why that's super important. What a lot of these apps will do is they'll sync with your phone. And if you log your workouts, like if you say, you know, you hit your Apple watch or whatever device and you log how long you work out, it's going to calculate how many estimated calories you burn, your steps, things like that. And what most of these apps will do is they will then add calories to your total. So let's say that I have, 
you know, a budget, like it says here, 1597, so 1,597 calories. If I was to burn 300 calories in exercise, this number would change to 1,897. Here's why that's not a good thing. If you're setting up your calories and you're trying to lose weight, if you constantly eat back the calories that you burn through exercise, there's a good chance that one, you're not going to lose any weight because you'll be burning and eating the same amount of calories. And that's what's what we call calorie maintenance or calorie balance, or even worse, you are going to burn a certain amount of calories and then eat more than the amount that you burned. If you're not really keeping that well, uh, you know, track of what you're consuming and you can actually overeat. Uh, in some cases, exercise can increase our appetites. And if we're not budgeting or managing our calories, it can cause us to eat more calories than we originally have planned. So that's one of the reasons why I do not like tracking the calories that you burn through an app. The only thing that you really need to do when it comes to tracking your exercise is just your consistency and how frequent you do it. The way that I track you know, my exercise is simply, did I get a weight resistance training workout in? Answer is yes or no. Okay, then I basically just go, okay, if I did it, great. If I didn't, I gotta do it. And then also tracking my steps. So there's nothing wrong with tracking your steps if you don't get lost in this idea that the calories are the most important factor when it comes to exercise. So you'll see on mine that I actually do track my steps. It actually records my steps for me. Now you can do that on your Fitbit or whatever watch you're using to track your steps. But yeah, there's a way that you can track your steps without it influencing how many calories you burn and then you know causing you to eat back those calories because we definitely don't want to eat back those calories, okay? All right, so now that we have those two settings uh, fixed, let's go to my day. Now, this is the far leftmost um, little toggle or little tab. And this isn't really gonna tell you a whole lot other than sort of just give you an overview. The summary is going to show you how many calories you have in your budget for the day. It's also gonna break down your macronutrients. Now, if you're just at the stage where you're trying to track your calories and macronutrients aren't really uh, the first priority, which, you know, if you're just trying to lose weight, the first priority should be total calories, then just focus on this first little section, this little square. If you've moved on to, you know, tracking macronutrients a little bit more diligently, but or if you're not even doing that, but you want to kind of see where you're at, this is the screen that you'll want to look at. Okay. Now, the next tab is log. This is where you'll spend the majority of your time. Okay, You'll be tracking or logging your food. Now, you'll see that for breakfast, I don't have any calories because I usually fast until lunch, and that's just my own personal preference. But when I do eat, what I do is I make sure that I hit the button, the plus button, right next to the meal that I want to eat. So I'll hit plus, and this gives me a bunch of different options that I can choose from in terms of foods. Now, what's really cool about Lose It, and I think other apps do this too, is that it'll start to recognize foods that I typically eat for lunch and suggest them, suggest them right away. Now I eat pretty much the same things every single day, but if you eat something different and you revisit that food later on, you can see that it, it'll pop up under your lunch foods. It sort of learns the kind of foods that you eat for lunch. Then if you, let's say you had something for dinner last night and you're gonna have it again for lunch, it'll say, okay, here are your recent meals. Here, here's what you had. You know, you can go ahead and add that if you want to. Okay, and then you've got something like create new food, which, you know, if you can't find it in the app, then you might want to uh, create it, so to speak. But most of the time, just scanning your uh, barcode you know, will make a make that really easy. And speaking of which, in the bottom right corner, at least for me, there's a little barcode button, and you want to click that whenever you want to scan a barcode. That's probably one of my favorite features of these apps is that if I bought like a, you know, a pre-made frozen dinner and I want to scan it, I'll have to do a scan. And you can do this things with things like sodas or other uh, things that, uh, you know, you just want the nutrition labels for. You don't want to necessarily, you know, worry about anything else, uh, especially if it's packaged. Now, going up to the top, you've got the search bar. Now, what I recommend doing when you're searching for a food is literally just type in the name of the food, like cooked chicken, right? And you're going to get all these different little, um, you know, options. Lose it has this verified only toggle that you can click and it only gives you verified amounts of food. So whether it's just calories or calories and macros and everything else, it only gives you verified versions, which is super important because, you know, if you look, if you're looking for food, like let's look at a non verified item. Um, no, it's not verified. So I'm going to click this one right here. This isn't verified. As you can see, there's no fiber, there's no sugars, there's no saturated fat that's logged. Not because this food doesn't necessarily have that, but because somebody who put this food in the database didn't put it in there. 
So, you know, if you, there's a good chance that you're going to make it more challenging for yourself to be accurate if you're selecting foods that aren't verified. Now, in some cases, you might not be able to find a food that's verified, and, and what I would recommend doing at that point is to scan the food if it has a barcode, but if for whatever reason it doesn't, then you might just have to use it uh, and maybe do some more diligent research online to see if there's you know somewhat accuracy with what you picked. But if you're just starting off, there's tons of verified foods. I'd really recommend hitting that verified only toggle just so that you can be as accurate as possible. It's already challenging to commit to something like tracking your food. Why make it any harder? All right, so then after search, you can go to My Foods. Now, these are all foods that you've previously scanned. So what's really cool is that if you've eaten something before and you've tracked it, it will sort of log it for you. It'll even tell you on the right next to the um, alphabet when the last time you ate it was. And that's pretty cool too. I mean, just, you know, in case you're curious. So there's lots of foods that I've scanned or I've logged that, you know, that are now quote unquote My Foods. And all I have to do is search for them and they'll pop up. Like I've had avocado sushi rolls. I had that on Friday, actually. So now I can just select that versus having to search for it again. Now I recommend searching anyway because after a while you're going to get a ton of foods that you log and it's probably better to just um, you know start typing the name of it and it will come up a little bit faster. Another cool feature in uh, Lose It anyway, and I'm sure that other apps do this as well, is that you can pull up uh, a, a tab that shows meals. So you can look at your meals throughout the last week and as long as all the uh, measurements are the exact same for the most part, you can pull up some of these, like I'm going to pull up this dinner. Now I could add everything that was in this dinner. Like again, let's say that I, last night I had this for dinner and I want to have the leftovers for lunch. I can pull all this up. What's also really cool is that let's say that I didn't have butternut squash. Like I just had the Italian sausage, the ground beef, and maybe, you know, some something else. I can untap that so it doesn't count in the foods that I add for that meal. And so I can just toggle these on and off if I want to. So that's really cool if if maybe you um, you know you had only three of the four items that you ate and you can just add it to your list. I use this fairly often because again I eat so, sort of the same things all the time so for me it's really convenient. Um, if you sort of change it up pretty often or have a lot of variety then this feature might only be useful every now and then. The next feature is recipes. Now these are all recipes that I've saved. Um, you know I have quite a few recipes. Um, they, they're constantly changing those so I have different uh, variations of them. But one of the things that's really cool, let's go back really quickly to uh, this tab, the log tab. So let's say that for lunch, this is a recipe that I just, I made, I really liked it and I want to save it. Well, one of the things I can do is if you see that the three little dots next to the plus sign across from the word lunch and the calories, if you hit that, you can um, go to the bottom here where it says add meal to recipes and I can click that and I can name my recipe. Like, uh, you know, let's say I wanted to add this as uh, ground turkey with brown rice. Right, obviously, spell brown right. There we go. And I'll save that. So now if I eat that often enough, it will save as a recipe. It's also going to give me options for, you know, is this the total recipe size? Is it one serving? Um, I can adjust some of these uh, measurements if I want to, you know, if, you know, if for whatever reason there's something else that I want to add, you know, whatever it might be. So that's pretty cool too. Um, and no, this meal is not a thousand calories. I think it's counting uh, all the broccoli that I put in there, which is actually just a recipe. So anyway, I'm going to cancel that because I don't want to actually add it. Um, and that's a really cool feature. So if you start to notice that you're eating something fairly often and you want to save some time, you can just save it as a recipe and then add it whenever you'd like. Or you could use that meal feature like we saw um, earlier. All right, so let's go back to this little dashboard. Um, the last one on this dashboard is brands. Now this uh, Lose It app has quite a few restaurant meals already logged in it. It has a couple of supermarket meals too. If you're if you're looking for like supermarket meals, what I would recommend is whatever you buy, just scan the barcode. It's going to be easier than having to search through all of this stuff, even if it's you know search based. For restaurants, what I also recommend is if you can't find it here, like I, there was a restaurant I went to the other day, the Yard House. Well, I guess they have Yard House, um, and I ordered something that wasn't on the menu or it was like a new item. A lot of times these restaurants and these other places that you eat on their menus will actually have the calories. So what you can do if you're eating out and you can't find you know, the, the exact food on the app, what you can do when you, let's say I'm going to add this to my dinner, I can 
go to the very bottom and just put add calories. Instead of making a whole new recipe, I can just hit add calories. And as long as I know how many calories it has, let's say it was a 523 calorie meal, I might not know the protein, the carbs, or the fats, but when you're trying to lose weight and you're keeping track of total calories, remember that total calories are the most important thing to track. Macronutrients are important, but they're not as important as total calories if your main goal is fat loss. Especially, you know, when you're going out to eat and you just need to be able to log the amount of calories. Most restaurants are going to have this calorie amount total, so at the very least you can track that. Okay? So now I could save that and it's going to add it to my day. It's not going to have any macros to it and it's not going to have any fancy names, but again, all I'm trying to do is be mindful and track my calories. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I don't actually plan on eating that. And that's pretty much what it takes to log and add food, all right? Now, one thing I want to point out is how to log different types of food. I did a video on this that you can find on my YouTube as well, so I won't spend too much time with this, but I want to make sure that you understand that it's very important to weigh your food and track it that way than simply just using things like measuring cups and tablespoons. Now, there's some exceptions to this rule. This isn't a you know hard and fast black and white type of rule, but generally speaking, what you want to be able to do is track in grams because grams is a universal form of measurement for you know solid sort of dry food. With liquids, you want to measure in milliliters, um, which is a pretty pretty much across the board with all liquids. Um, proteins, you could measure in grams if you want to. I found that it's easier because the numbers are smaller to measure uh, protein sources in ounces, which we'll go to in a second. But what's really cool is when you add a food, you have a lot of different ways that you can track it. And just about every food that is um, supposed to be measured in grams or can be measured in grams appropriately is going to have a grams option. Now, this won't always be the case. It's not a perfect system. Uh, so in some cases, what you might have to do is a little bit of math. Like, for instance, um, let's go ahead and add, let's just say I added Greek yogurt to my um, to my meal today. Now, when I add Greek yogurt, it I, I measure it in... Um, uh, in grams, like when I put on my scale, but there's no way to measure grams on this. And I think it's because this tracks it sort of as a fluid liquid. It's some, you know, yogurt's sort of like a solid and a liquid at the same time. So I could do fluid ounces if I wanted to. Um, that's one way of doing it. But on the actual, um, you know, food itself, it measures it in cups and grams. So it's kind of frustrating because yes, I could measure it in cups. And, and again, that's the probably the second best way you can do it. It's not necessarily perfect, but again, we're not trying to go for perfect. We're just trying to go for consistent. So in this case, you might have to do some math. Like I know that uh, Greek yogurt for a three fourths of a cup, at least for this brand is a um, 170 grams. So what I might have to do is I might have to look at how many grams I weighed my Greek yogurt and then I'll have to divide that by the amount of grams that is in a serving size. So again, a little bit of math, but out of all the foods that I eat, this is, I think, one of two foods that I have to do that with, which is well worth it. If I had to do this with every food, I would have already given up and probably not actually followed through with this. But you are going to hit some of those situations where that's going to happen, and you know, don't let it discourage you. It just takes you know, maybe another 30 seconds to set things up. All right, so now that we've gone over that, this is that's pretty much the bulk of this. Everything I want to go over now is is sort of um, kind of secondary or not as important as the the first stuff that I went over. So to the right of the plus, the blue plus sign at the bottom, at least for me, you're going to see this goals tab. Now this is kind of cool. This gives you an overview of all your goals, and you can toggle your goals on and off uh, depending on if you have the paid version or the free version. I went ahead and bought the year subscription just to check it out. It cost me, I think, 30 or $40. You can do everything that you want to do for free in this app. You do not have to purchase the paid version. In fact, when I purchased the paid version, I realized that what you're getting for paying for this, uh, the features in this app is really not going to make things any better. It's sort of... You know, if you're going to pay for some of the extra features, it's sort of kind of for the nerd or the, the person who really likes detail and likes a lot of these different like metrics. But if you're just trying to lose weight and you're just for the first time or maybe, you know, the second or third time tracking calories and all you want is, you know, being able to track your weight, track your calories, then you can you can get away with just using the free version. OK, so some of these features might not be available to you, but trust me, it's not going to make a difference. I know for a fact that tracking your weight is a free option and I've been doing so consistently since May 26th and this has been my journey so far 
Now you've probably already heard me talk about downward trends and you know what to look what, look for with weight loss. So you already know a lot of what's going on in this graph. Um, but anyway, this is really cool. If you weigh yourself every single day, uh, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to see a graph very similar to this. Now I personally do not really like the weight loss uh, uh, graph that that Lose It uses. It's it's sort of I don't know, primitive, like I, I don't really like the way it looks. There's a better app that I use that that's called Weight Gurus. I would recommend downloading that and using that because the functionality and the learning that you get from that is gonna be much greater than something like uh, Lose It. So download that to track your weight if you'd like. Um, but yeah, it will still track your weight and still give you somewhat of a graph. It's just not as pretty or uh, you know fun to uh, share as um, you know Weight Gurus. So I've added a couple of extra goals for myself, so you might not see these, um, but you can, you know, if you have the availability to add them, they can make things a little bit more fun. I definitely don't recommend some of these if if you're just getting started for the very first time and all you're focusing on is calories. Don't worry about these right now. This is for somebody who's like also fa uh, factoring in, uh, you know, steps and you know protein and things like that. Um, so. Don't worry so much about that, but it does have that functionality if you want to. Like I'm tracking my protein, and what this is telling me is I've set a goal of 157 grams of protein every day. So every day that I track, what I'm trying to shoot for is I'm trying to shoot for getting at least 157 grams. Now, being a coach and, and just being sort of used to this, I don't. I very rarely miss a day where I'm under the amount of protein I need because I prioritize it. But if you're getting used to this and you're starting to prioritize protein, this can be a good way to you know set a goal for yourself and really shoot for it. Steps is another thing. I try to keep a goal of at least 12,000 steps. You know, whenever I'm actually tracking it, and you know, so that could be a goal that you want to try out. I don't know why this Fitbit calories is here because I, I don't care at all about the calories that I burn, uh, at least from a tracking standpoint, because it, it can get in my head a lot of times and I've learned how to get over that, but don't let that, uh, you know, that feature get to you. So again, you can set different goals, like I have here general, you know, you can track your body fat, you know, all these different things. Again, lots of extra stuff that isn't necessary that you do not need to dive into and make it more complicated. Really, the only things you have to pay attention to is stuff I've already gone over. So make sure you, you know, you do that uh, and you focus on that first. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's the Lose It app. Um, there's probably other things I could go over, like the social stuff, but that's the bare bones of it. That's the most important thing that you need to know is what we've uh, gone over so far. So remember, you can download this for free. You can get everything you need out of it for free. You do not have to purchase the paid version in order to get the amount of functionality that's going to help you track your weight loss goals and your weight loss journey. Uh, so that's basically it. Yeah, with that, with that being said, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you share it with other people who use Lose It. Or maybe you've got a friend or a family member who's tracking for the first time and they don't know what app to use. Recommend Lose It. Recommend this uh, video so they know how to use it. And no, I am not sponsored by Lose It. Um, I just really like the app. And I, th I think that uh, because I've tried so many apps and I'm sort of discouraged by just about every one of them, this one really stood out to me because it is so easy to use. And, and now you have a tutorial on how to actually use it. So anyway, thanks for watching this video today. Uh, don't forget to share, like, and comment below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. And have a great rest of your day. You just remain as calm as possible. Make the deal go through. If not, here's 12 shots. We know how you do. Please make your feelings clean. Slugs up in between. Your eyes like true lies. Kill them and free the scene. Let's bring back the coke or the cream. Or else, your life is on the shelf. We mean this, Frank. The cats be fucking with the bombs in your mom's gas tank. Let's get this money, baby. They say we...